Frontier Paradigm Games. Hi, it's me, Austin. Although to be honest, I'm not super sure if I want to address this video to Gray Still Plays instead of Paradigm Games because honestly, I have been extremely, and I mean extremely tempted to fact check videos of his before. Not because he's done anything wrong, just because I'm a fan and he plays games that are good to nitpick. And I'm a nitpicker and like, how can I resist a game like Solar Smash, which lets you literally carve up the entire planet with a super powerful death ray? Oh, it is on like Donkey Kong! <laughs> Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Solar Smash is a mobile game where you get to indulge your worst impulses in the form of a kid with a magnifying glass versus some ants. However, instead of a magnifying glass, it is Cthulhu, and instead of an ant hill, it is an entire freaking planet. Plus, I've wanted to do a Death Star video for ages, so here we go! There's all sorts of things I could look at in Solar Smash, from the Cthulhu monster, the ghost punching guy, the missile swarm, and the laser that's able to carve the planet in half without destroying it somehow, but to keep it simple, we're gonna look at the Death Ray, the big baddie that's capable of destroying the planet entirely in one shot. Is this even possible? How would you do it if it were possible? And how many Duracell batteries would it take to power such a device? To my, uh... My guess is two. Two batteries, they're, uh, they're very good. Please sponsor me. Okay, so to get it out of the way first, exploding a planet is totally possible. How do I know this? Because suns can explode. Novae and supernovae and hypernovae all are things that explode out in the wider universe. If you put enough energy into anything, anything at all, it will explode. Well, or turn into a black hole. I guess you can't really explode a black hole either, except I guess technically by hawking radiation. But hey, did you know that there's a theoretical size limit to how big black holes can get. They're called ultra massive black holes, which can get as big as 50 billion solar masses, which at this size, we're talking, wait, okay, you know what? <laughs> no, I'm not getting sidetracked talking about black holes. Uh, maybe if this video does well, we'll do a video on universe sandbox. That'd be a pretty good excuse. Where was I? Oh, right. Put enough energy into anything and it'll explode. Boom. Okay, so how much energy do we need to put into a thing to make it explode? Well, it depends upon what you're trying to make blow up. In our case, we actually know what we're trying to explode. It is the entire Earth. In order to explode the Earth, you're gonna have to put enough energy into it to overcome the forces holding it together. When you explode like a firecracker or something, the energy released by the chemical bonds forming inside the firecracker heat up and expand, putting pressure on the thing containing it, a cardboard tube. In order to explode, it has to overcome the forces holding the tube together. Does that make sense? Same thing with the Earth, except the force that needs to be overcome is the force of gravity, as opposed to the molecular bonds between glue and pulverized wood fibers that make up the cardboard exterior of the firecracker. Essentially, you have to overcome the gravitational power holding the Earth together, and the rest will handle itself. And thankfully, there's actually a formula for calculating how much energy is holding the planet together. And it is really, really simple. It's just 3gm squared divided by 5r. Now, this formula looks simple on its face, but it's actually surprisingly complicated and requires many integrals and calculus, all of which simplify to this perfect tiny little gem. 3 times the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the object squared divided by 5 times the radius. Mwah! When we plug in the values for the Earth, 6.3 million meters for the radius and 5.97 times 10 to the 24th power kilograms, <gasps> we get a whopping result of 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules of energy, or 223.9 billion yada joules, which is the bare minimum energy required to explodify the entire planet. For context, that's more energy than we get from the sun. Like, ever. Seriously. That's 66.5 billion years worth of solar radiation that reaches us on our tiny little world. Given that the entire life 
lifespan of our solar system is estimated to last a total of only like 10 billion years. Suffice to say that this is a tremendously large amount of energy. But it's not an amount that you can't like get your head around. And in fact, the total actual output of the sun being 384.6 yottawatts, if we could if we could somehow dunk the sun into water and let it spin up a turbine like a power plant, it'd take just shy of a week to generate the amount of energy we would need to power this death laser or plasma beam. Honestly, at energy is this huge, it's not even like it matters that much. The death beam in Solar Smash fires for, uh, according to my calculations timing how long it takes the Earth to spin in place in the game and adjusting it to a realistic time scale. Uh, sorry, I got sidetracked. The Earth in the game spins faster than the real Earth for aesthetic reasons, but don't worry your little head, I definitely accounted for that. Okay, so the beam fires for approximately 974 seconds, or just over 16 real world minutes adjusting for time scale, outputting six days worth of solar energy in that short amount of time, outputting 229.7 thousand yottawatts of power. <laughs> Which, for the record, even if the Earth didn't explode, everything on it would definitely be dead, which is something you do see in the game. The instant the beam, laser, or whatever hit the atmosphere, everything it came into contact with would instantly become plasma, hotter than the core of the sun. The massive spike in heat would create a huge pressure wave that would move out from the point of impact, vaporizing nearby buildings and reverberating around the entire Earth. It wouldn't be like an atmosphere anymore. The pressure wave would be so dense and hit so hard that it would be like a wall of thick steel ripping around the globe, bulldozing everything in its path. Within minutes of first contact, there would not be a single living mammal on the surface of the planet. There might be some fish alive in the sea, but as soon as the pressure waves from the beam boring into the crust hit the ocean, boom! Sea life is dead too. Maybe some single cellular life may remain. It's not totally clear how pressure waves impact all of them, but within five minutes, there would be no more animal kingdom. As the beam pushes through the crust and closer to the core, earthquakes unlike anything that have ever been felt on this planet would rip through it like Taco Bell rips through my digestive tract, shattering entire mountains and filling canyons. Even after the beam was fired, the intense heat from the vaporized and I quite literally mean vaporized iron and nickel from our molten core would start to expand out, straining against its own gravity as the tremendously huge energy infused in the molecules keeps them moving too fast to care. It's entirely likely that the positron and electron pairs generated from this massive infusion of energy into our world would result in the obliteration of matter altogether, sending gamma and x-rays in all directions, causing even more havoc. Eventually, the pressures and energies reached would be too much and gravity would become laughably insufficient to hold the planet together. I mean, we're talking six days of sun energy levels here. Gravity does not even enter the equation anymore. And like that, the Earth will be powderized, sending every particle that once made it up flying off into infinity forever. And uh, for what it's worth, the beam in Solar Smash gets it kinda right. It's close, it's really close. Adjusted for real life time scales, it does take a little too long for the Earth to explode, kind of funnily enough. But other than that, it's absolutely totally spot on to how it would actually happen. I have no idea how that little tiny alien spaceship the size of Florida manages to cram six days of the sun's total output into its interior, but I mean, it's technically possible. I mean, I calculated the mass equivalent of that amount of energy and got 2.49 times 10 to the 15 kilograms, which uh, has a Schwarzschild radius of 0 0.00000000037 meters. So it's not gonna collapse into a black hole. So I'm um, gonna label this one solidly plausible somehow. I don't know how, but it is technically. So uh, yeah, little mobile game turns out to be surprisingly consistent with real world physics. No notes, A plus.
Oh, and I was uh, way off on my estimate of two Duracell batteries by, by a lot. It would take only 23.8 octillion Duracell batteries to power this thing. So uh, start saving up now and you'll have a death ray in only 20 billion years. Sincerely, Austin. I want to give a personal from the deepest, darkest corners of my recessed heart thanks to my patrons on Patreon, Matthew Ridge, Isby, Ronald Coleman, Alan Hagers, Edit MTP, Nicholas Spillinger, Marissa Resnick, and Loretta Mazurf. You guys make this show possible. I love you so much and have a good one.